Leslie Gore, born Leslie Sue Goldstein in Brooklyn, New York City, was born into a middle-class Jewish family, but would soon become a multi-million selling artist who recorded dozens of hits and major songs. Her fame began at the age of 16 when she recorded her hit song, It's My Party. The song became a number one nationwide hit. On top of that, it was her first recording. Gore's version was certified as a gold record. Quincy Jones heard the demos, called me up and asked me if I'd like to record with him. He had It's My Party. They didn't want to release it immediately. They wanted me to change my name. The evening after we've recorded It's My Party, Quincy goes to Carnegie Hall to host an event. Phil Spector ran up to him and basically said to him, Quincy, I'm recording one of the greatest songs I've ever heard in my life. It's My Party with the Crystals, who were just coming off the biggest song of their career, a song called Do Do Run Run. Unbeknownst to the veteran songwriter Aaron Schroeder, the song had inadvertently been sent to two major music producers. Quincy called Phil Ramone, the great record producer, made him get up on a Sunday morning and ran off 100 acetates of It's My Party, which Quincy put in the mail to 100 radio stations on Monday morning. He then got on a plane to Japan. He gets back six weeks later, and he calls her and says, what did we change the kid's name to? And Irving said, ah, oh, Quincy, you haven't heard. It's My Part is the number one song in the nation, and we didn't have time to change your name. It's Leslie Gore. And Quincy said, perfect, I love it. It's My Party was followed by many other hits for Gore, including the sequel, Judy's Turn to Cry, U.S. Number 5, She's a Fool, U.S. Number 5, the feminist selling song called You Don't Own Me, which held at number two for three weeks. That's the way boys are, U.S. number 12, Maybe I Know, number 14. Look of Love, U.S. number 27, and Sunshine, Lollipops, and Rainbows, U.S. number 13. More of her hits included It's Gotta Be You and I Don't Wanna Be a Loser. Leslie Gore had so many chart-topping hits. Like previously stated, one of Leslie Gore's hits is titled You Don't Own Me. The song is still quite popular in the 21st century. The song was used in a major movie in 2016 called Suicide Squad. You Don't Own Me was also recorded by the singer Say Grace and was made a fairly big hit in the U.S. You Don't Own Me was also used in the movie The First Wives Club. What is it that we really, really need? You know, Brenda, you are never going to change. And yeah. I hope not. That's right. I hope none of us ever change. I hope we always get to stay the same, tired and happy. I know. And maybe a little bit 
brave. Brave? You mean... Brave. Huh? Like, what do you mean? You don't hold me. You're not funny. No way. I'm out. I'm not... Stop it! No, I'm not gonna... <laughs> you don't hold <laughs> me. Don't say I'm I not can't go with you. And don't tell me what to do, <laughs> and don't right. tell me what yeah. to say, and when I go out with you, don't put me on display. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> you remember. You don't own me. Don't try to change me in any way. You don't own me. Don't tie me down, cause I'll never stay. I don't tell you what to say. I don't tell you what to do. So just let me be myself. That's all I ask of you. I'm young, and I love to be young. I'm free, and I love to be free. To live my life the way that I want. To say and do whatever I please. I'm young, and I love to be young. As well as Gore being a prominent singer, she also was quite an actress. Gore performed in two consecutive episodes of Batman the Television series on January 19th and 25, 1967. She starred as a pussycat, one of the Catwoman's minions. Maybe now all the gray has gone away. Gore signed a contract with Mercury Records, a five-year term that carried her obligations to the company through the spring of 1968. Beginning in 2003, Gore hosted several editions of the PBS television series In the Life, which focused on LGBTQ issues. In a 2005 interview with After Ellen, she stated that she was a lesbian and been in a relationship with luxury jewelry designer Lois Sasson since 1982. She had known about her attraction to women from the time she was 20 and stated that the music business was totally homophobic. There is no way back in the 60s and 70s that you were going to talk about it. Do you want to talk? If you want to ruin your career, you can. Gore had been working on a memoir and a Broadway show based on her life when she died of lung cancer on February 16, 2015, at the NYU Lagoon Medical Center in Manhattan, New York City, at the age of 68. She had never smoked a cigarette in her life. Her death was very sudden and unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> 